great thing God has done. I heard yesterday that you should look on the mountains, you should look on the waters, you should look even on the rivers. You will see the great things that God has done. And again, you should look on your life. You will see the great things that God has done. We stand gathered here today, this morning, to welcome all the guests among us, starting with the AWS. Uh, president and uh, delegates who come from the province of Southern Africa and also all the members of, from the branches within the desk. All the members of AWF within the branches in St. Mark will welcome you also. Also welcome all the guests, those who are here to worship with us for the first time. Please feel at home. And we need great things God has done, the multimedia is back. The multimedia is back. And also welcome to Muruti Sophie Mukonyane, who will be sharing the words of God to us today. And also Muruti Mahamatu, whom she is in the sanctuary, we welcome you. Come, let us pray. Lord God, and then when we look from our left to the right, from north to south, all we see, Lord, is the work of your hands. How great it is, Lord. Be with us, Lord, this morning as we gather here, Heavenly Father, to hear your words to come together in fellowship and to partake together in your love table. May we be moved by your Holy Spirit in all that we do not do. May your Spirit, Lord, come and be among us and within us and in us. We dedicate ourselves, Lord, to you, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who are following on their prayer book, our series continues from page 104. Nevertheless, and God willing, everything will be projected on the overhead. My dear sisters and brothers, the Lord of oh, my dear sisters and brothers, Hallelujah, Christ is pleasing. He is pleasing indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, servants of the Lord. And blessed be God. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Lord is the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship You. We give You thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord of Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of our God, receive our prayers, for you are the one and the only one, you are the one and the Lord, you are the one and the most high, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of our Father. Amen. We may sit on him. Let us pray. Almighty God. This is the first and the greatest commandment. 
and the serpent is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve and to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our living Father, we pray to the Lord and confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in the thought of the way that we did, and in the heart of the way that we have done, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, who gave us all that is us, and the blood that we may serve you, in the midst of our life, to the Lord and Lord. And Almighty God, who forgave all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you all in all goodness, and keep you in a life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together as we pray the college of this week. <coughs> Raise your eyes. You will be
I'll read up to the same forum and allow the communication to complete the same. <clears throat> Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. <laughs>
Let no seven, let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. This is the word of God.
before, starting from verse 36. Glory to Christ, our Savior. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were all silent and threatened, thinking they had so people. He said to them, Why are you so troubled? Why do you doubt rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see a head. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, while they were still do not believe in his cause of joy and amazement. He asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They had given him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I have told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. That is what is writing about you in the law of Moses, the prophet and the sons. Then he opened the mind of they who do not understand the future. He told them, This is what is writing. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the day on the day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sin to be preached. In his name, to all nations beginning at Jerusalem, you are a witness of these things. <coughs> this is the gospel of Christ. Glory to Christ our Savior. <laughs>
here. Amen. When they were busy discussing about how Jesus has appeared to each one of them, Jesus just came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And I'm going to say to you, Peace be with you. So let us pray. Thank you, Father, for letting us gather today in our church to hear your word, your holy word. Bless me with wisdom and understanding to speak only your word, my Lord. Amen. Let's sit down. My sermon will mainly be from our gospel of today, the gospel of St. Luke, verse 24, and in chapter 24, from verses 36 to 38. And when I was reading, something came into my mind. And I gave all this reading the theme put your faith in your God only. Then I looked again into the scripture. I had two only two sub endings from all these readings. I picked up this, the unbelieving disciples. Even today, even if they took a lot of time with Jesus Christ while he was still on earth, even after his resurrections, they are still not believing. Then Jesus is telling them, touch me. Feel me and see in me or through me because I'm not a ghost. The ghost does not have muscles or bones. That is what Jesus reassured them. And they, are, they, they, they were so frightened indeed as if they saw a ghost. But our Lord is telling them, I'm not a ghost. Yes, our Lord is not a ghost. Because a ghost cannot walk. But Jesus Christ is walking with us throughout our lives. Whether we are in mourning or jubilating, our Lord is always walking with us. But the ghost cannot walk. That ghost can be anything. The people that we live with, people amongst us, they can take us through wrong directions and they will never walk with us, especially during sad moments. But our heart, is not the ghost. Where there is unbelief, indeed, there is no faith. You cannot have faith when you do not believe. The two are nearly the same, but belief and faith is not the same. The word of God is saying they didn't believe, even if they see. <coughs> even if they see, even if they touch Jesus Christ. Until Jesus Christ was telling them, give me that bread, bread. And he broke that bread. And they were looking at the sign of breaking the bread by Jesus Christ. Then they, some of them were saying, yeah, this is Jesus Christ. How long will you take, or how long will it take us to have faith in Christ? I usually ask myself that, Imagine one day I'm standing in front of the 
congregation and preaching. You are facing us here. And I will not just enter that room, this room, this church, <coughs> and repeat the same word and say, Please be with you. You are not seeing the I am seeing the Christ. I imagine I'm imagining that situation. I don't know what will happen to the people in front here. I don't know what will happen to me and our reactions in front here will also affect your reaction. The way we will be reacting up here will also affect your reaction. It's even unfortunate in question because the windows are so high. <laughs> Unlike in my church, and there you know, you can just go out of that door. But in Christ church, I looked and said that I, if that moment can come and I'm frightened, when my Lord is telling me, let peace be with you, there's only one door. <laughs> so they didn't believe. Then I'm coming to my second. Subjecting. How do we as Christians overcome that unbelief? That unbelief that is, is with us every day. Even at my age, you can guess my age. I am just about to be 67. It's just here, that one. But still, I'm asking myself, do I really believe in Christ? Am I a, a true believer, a staunch believer? Can I take this, this young generation to a Christianity, real Christianity? If we can just ask ourselves that, as this generation, if we don't believe the Church of God, Will be doomed. People outside, the onlookers that that uh, that we're, we're talking about in the book of Acts, they will look at us and say that, "Are we really Christians?" So we need to have that strong belief in Christ, and I have indicated that to overcome that disbelief or unbelief. One has to really receive the scripture and listen to what the scripture is telling us. They after will place our faith in that scripture. They did not believe. Jesus Christ saw their disbelief and started telling them about what is written. In the law of Moses, what is written, what is written in Psalms, and what is written in Prophets. In fact, when I'm looking at this, is the whole of the Old Testament, the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the Prophets is the whole Old Testament. Jesus was trying to tell them that when I was still with you on the earth. I told you that I will resurrect on the third day as the law of Moses, or as the Old Testament is telling, as Prophet Isaiah has predicted or prophesied that I will be the suffering servant and I will be the Messiah. He told them, but they don't, didn't believe. So in order for us to overcome that disbelief, let us revisit our scripture. It's of no use as Christians, especially my fellow Christians in the Anglican Church, we will find that we are the first to buy the lectionaries, but the last to read the word of God. <laughs> so let us revisit the scripture. And when we revisit the scripture, you can read that scripture alone, but it's even much better to consult others. 
so that we share this word of God and understand it. That's why I usually say, <coughs> my AWF attention. Bible study is very, very important. And when I talk about the Bible study, let, let, let us refrain from this thing of uh, looking at all the problems that we have in the Anglican Church. We do have the Langham preaching, we do have the uh, Christian listening, all, all those problems, and we, we do have the, the, the Bible study. But the Bible study, when I'm looking at it, is the main thing. Let us not do that Bible study when we read the, 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 the text, and after reading the text, then we say, let us discuss. Instead of us discussing the word of God, we'll be competing who is giving the best ideas. And we argue amongst ourselves. That is not in biblical studies. When we read the word of God, we ask the Holy Spirit so that when we leave that room during our Bible studies, we should be touched. We should be touched, really touched. So, uh, I, I usually say those people who are having self groups, they are very much fortunate. Because once in, in my lifetime, I went to Pretoria to see my daughter. She belongs to this same group. And the way I've learned from them, they are really doing justice to scripture. So if we pray for one another in that same group, and we start the way, we will be knowing scripture. Because it's not only knowing scripture, is to take this young generation through scripture so that they understand. If you don't understand the scripture, they will not understand. In fact, we'll find ourselves in a situation where the word of God, I mean the Bible, is amended. We are busy amending the Bible because we know too much. Let us study the Bible and not come with our knowledge. We are not God. But only one son of man who is Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is the way. The way to make flesh. The other thing to overcome prayer is to pray without ceasing. Pray continuously. Because the time when you, you give yourself leave not to pray, that is when things are go upside down. And when you go back, you say that I'm starting to pray, then you'll be crying. God does not want us to cry. God wants us to jubilate every day. And with that prayer that you pray without ceasing, that prayer will make you to have a timid faith. Your faith will be unshaken. You will not have anxiety or easily intimidated. Sometimes as Christians, we are just intimidated by just a small negative remark. You find that you are so angry, you can't pray because of that small negative remark. So when you pray without ceasing, you will not easily be intimidated. You listen to the word of God with all your heart. You can't pray while you are crying or while you are still thinking about me, what I said to you. And people will get used to that. They will tease you every day so that you don't pray. <laughs> so that you even finish time without praying. And your children need you to pray for them. The congregation need you to pray for them because you are chosen amongst others. When we look at Psalm 4, there is some way that is saying our God has chosen the faithful servants 
and that faithful servants he chose for himself only. That is in Psalm 4. So let us have the team faith. And we can do that through praying. Now I was talking about the time when you were activated. Faith becomes growing or eventually growing. What do you do with that faith? Please, preference, let us put that faith in action. Let us put that faith in action. James is telling us that faith without action is. Ah, that one is not recognized at all. It's not faith at all. But the one that you believe in will make your faith to be stable. You are not going to, to, to lose that faith for, because of that silly remarks or the little remarks. You are not going to be is, easily intimidated, I repeat. Then, according to the will of God also. You do everything according to the will of God. Because we as Christians, especially as Anglican girls, we are saying the creed, the apostles in the Nicene Creed, we are saying that we believe in our Father, one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you put your faith in action, you will be looking at that. That I've got only one God. Three persons in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. By this I will refer you to what we have read in Acts. Where Paul, I mean not Paul, Peter and John has killed the lame beggar. They were putting their faith in action. And when I looked at the two scriptures, uh, the Gospel of St. Luke and his, his second book, which is the Acts of Apostles, the two texts are interrelated. In fact, the one text is a continuation of the first one. Why I am saying this? Peter was there amongst the disciples when Jesus told them that I'm not a ghost. Now, the very same Peter is talking to the onlookers. Those onlookers are those people that after the name beggar was healed, they were amazed and they saw the wonders of God in John and Peter because they believed in Christ who has told them that I'm sending you to the world after the Holy Spirit shall be upon you I'm sending you to the world and take this gospel and heal the people you'll see that the, 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 the two gospel they, they are interrelated the other one is the, uh, the continuation of the heart because Peter was there when Jesus Christ was telling them I'm not a ghost and that time, the Lord Jesus Christ did not judge the disciples. Instead of seeing their little, uh, in fact, he saw their little faith and their disbelief by that time. Jesus Christ did not judge them. He started teaching them. In the church of God, when we see that people are of little faith, our responsibility is to teach them the word of God. The word of God should not only be known by the pastors and the other people. Those that we say were coming from Langham preaching, we did taught preaching. We went for the first and the second and the third sessions. After we shall have come from the Langham preaching, let us come and share the word of God. As Jesus has taught the disciples who did not believe. And even these onlookers, because they were amazed, Peter started 
telling them about how they crucified Jesus. I'm saying they. Maybe I should include Peter also in myself. He was teaching them and he was telling them. I compare this with the time when Jesus Christ taught them about scripture, reminded them about scripture. And the only what he's saying, after he had taught them about the, uh, the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets, he opened their minds. Who is there to open our minds today when we read, when we read the scripture? We have got the, the, the Holy Spirit that will open our minds when we read the scripture. We can't understand the, the scripture alone without inviting the Holy Spirit. Every day when you read your scripture, when you pray, ask for the Holy Spirit to teach you and guide you. Then I'm comparing the first incident in Luke and that one of Acts. Just as Jesus had referred them to the scripture, I've said this one. Peter is also telling them that you people, we have killed Jesus and we have disowned him and we have prepared to, to take the, uh, the murderer to save the murderer instead of saving our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, even if he did not say it, today Peter is saying that I don't blame you because what was done during that time was done out of ignorance. I like this statement when you see people go being led astray and you come and say, I don't blame you. I'm here to teach you. This is what Peter told the, the onlookers there to say that this was done out of ignorance. This killing of Jesus was done out of ignorance. And in the book of, of, of Luke, Jesus is telling them that you, are, you shall be the witnesses of what I've done. And Peter is answering Jesus in the book of Acts, we hear Peter saying, People, we are the witnesses of all that has happened. We are the witnesses of all that happened. There is a song in, in our baby hymn, the Anglican Chase. We believe and we praise the Lord, even if we don't see the Lord, but the Lord will be seen in us as Christians. Jesus has said that they are witnesses. Peter is saying we are witnesses. And Jesus has told them to preach about repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We can't keep on uh, preaching and evangelizing without winning the souls of people. We need to win the souls of people. AWF, you do have this thing in your manual that you will do the outreach. And that outreach in our, in our manual simply means that let's go out and win the souls of people and bring the people to this church of God. Because people are being led astray outside. My Lord Jesus Christ has fed 5,000 people being alone. But today, one man wants to be fed by 5,000 people. And if you don't read the scripture, will fall amongst those 5,000 and go and feed one man. will come with the shallow gospel. In my language, they always say, those priests will say, Oh, and in a bench. Meaning that what you gave me before, or what you offered before, is very little. You better increase the offering. 
So as Christians, we must guard against falling into that trap. And if people may have fallen into that trap, and we know their names, when they come back to this church, let us welcome them. Because a church is a welcoming place. Mm. Let us give them the word, oh, welcome. They, they, they are the sheep that were led astray. Now they are coming home. Let us not judge them. Let us take them in. He has taught them to teach repentance for the uh, forgiveness of sins. And we look into this, this situation where we, we, we see Peter, after talking to those people, the onlookers, most of them believed. It depends on how we are talking to the people. If you talk about the word of God, not about yourself, people will come to God. But if you take the word of God and own it, people will come to you and they will not know the God, the living God. This weight is for God, it's not for us. I see a renaim it belongs to God. We need to win the souls of people, I repeat. With faith, when we have faith, we must take that faith and put it, put that faith in the Lord, in the Lord only. If you don't put the faith in the Lord only, you will find yourself regarding yourself as the same God. <coughs> We don't want that. And when we talk about this faith, this faith will result in us not sinning at all. It will need us to have a pure heart. Some people who are, are judging, we are judging the type of sins that people are committing. Maybe you find us saying that it's better to, to be a thief than to be an adulterous person. But in Exodus chapter 20, there is no way what is, where it is indicated that this sin is better than this. Those are the Ten Commandments. We must take them the way they are. Sin is sin. And we need to stay away from sin because our, we, are, we are putting our faith in the Lord. For how long will you shame my glory? That is the question that was asked in Psalm 4. It is the Psalm of David. And you are taught, for how long, people of God? Will we shame the Lord of God? If we are Christians, let us remain Christians. Because when we enter that door, we are assured by God that we are the faithful chosen and we are chosen for God only. Put your faith in the Lord. And I thank you very much for listening to me, for telling you to put your faith in the Lord. And you must also say to me, Ruth, put your faith also in the Lord. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Today we join the age of the members in giving thanks for the successful meeting of the Provincial Executive Committee here in Polokwane this weekend. As the members look out a theme of reimagining ourselves, reimagining ourselves, igniting God's plan, may we all pray for them that in their service they may continue to uplift and inspire all those who gather in the fellowship. We will continue with form A. The prayer is on page 109. However, the written son of the protocol. As we celebrate the Holy Eucharist to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for his mercies, let us pray for his church in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in his name. We pray for your church throughout the world, and especially for this diocese, and for Luke, our bishop, together with Tago, our metropolitan. Give your church power to proclaim the gospel of Christ, and grant that we, and all Christian people may be united in truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, give to all the reverence of your, for your creation, and make us worthy stewards of your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, to those in authority, direct this and every nation in the way of justice and peace, that all may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to all whose lives are closely linked with us, that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. us. To all who suffer, give courage, healing, and a steadfast trust in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. us. We remember with thanksgiving your servants who have gone before us. According to your promises, grant us with them share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bless and praise you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord, for the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs. And we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We will stand for this. As we read in my ourselves, and we will put on that faith of ourselves. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were glad when they saw the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
continue us on page 116 in our prayer book. We'll join together as we say the second paragraph of 48. Together we say. Thank <laughs> you. 
to look for this coming glory. We celebrate, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, this one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, there is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink this holy gift in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by the Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ.
on this side of the island.
God is good. All the time. And all the time. All the time. I don't like to be embarrassed. <laughs> the microphone is embarrassing. Um, I don't see Brasai. I thought it was the O. Oh, Brasai, uh, please prepare yourself. You will be talking on Masai. I'll give you an opportunity to talk on Masai. Um, perhaps allow me to go through this uh, announcement and then we will talk to Masai. Are we having any visitors other than the AWF? No, Mr. Oh, nice. Can, can you please introduce yourself, now? Thank you so much. Are you visiting your daughter or son? Or you are here on other cases? Oh, nice. Sister Mpo is uh, one of our congregants. She's probably in the kitchen right now, a member of India. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Uh, from the province as in Joker. 